How's it going everyone? My name is Miguel Fuentes and today is Wednesday and today we're going to be doing a breakdown of Isaiah chapter 6. And uh, man, you know, when you study the book of prophecies, um, you know, it's very, very interesting, very, very interesting. Um, studying Bible prophecy can be difficult at times. And I just did a uh, lesson on how to study biblical books. And, you know, sometimes they're hard to understand. But that's why we have the Holy Spirit to help us to understand the scriptures. <clears throat> so, before we get started, let's go ahead and pray first. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to get into your word. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you are holy, that you are mighty, that you are king of all kings and lord of all lords. And, Father, we praise you for who you are, Father. We praise you. We glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, the book of Isaiah, now let me start with the book of Isaiah background. It is a book of prophecy. It's written between um, 701 to 681 BC, the end of King uh, Uzar reign, through King Jophan, uh, Ahaz, and uh, Hezekiah uh, reign. Uh, his prophetic calling was to the uh, to, you know Judah and Jerusalem. And before we get get further, uh, let's go ahead and read Isaiah chapter six. <coughs> And I'm reading from the uh, I'm reading from the uh, modern English version. And it reads, "In the year that King Uzzah died, I saw the Lord sitting on his, sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the the temple. And above it stood the cherubim. Each one had six wings, with two had covered his face." his face and two he covered his feet and two uh, he flew cry out to one to sorry cry out to another and said holy 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 is the Lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory the post of the door moved at the voice of him who cried, and the house was filled with smoke. And I say, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man on unclean lips, and have and I dwell in the midst of the from, uh, of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the the Lord of hosts. Then one of the cherubim flew to me with a live coal, which he had taken with the ton tongues from off the altar in his hand. And he laid it on my mouth and said, This has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. He says, Go and tell this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not prevail. Make the heart of this people dull. 
and their ears heavy, and their and sh shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn and be healed. Then I said, Lord, how long? And he said, and he answered, until the cities are laid waste, without inheritance, and the house without men. And the land is utter desolate. And the Lord has removed men far off, sorry, far away. And there is a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But ye and it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be burnt, as a cherubith tree or as an oak, who stomp remains when it is cut down so the holy seed is its stem or sump mm. so what do we have here <clears throat> all right so what do we have here the vision of Isaiah he saw cherubims in the throne of God, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And because of that, he has a calling. Isaiah calling to be a prophet for the Lord. And we see this in verse 5. And then later in verse 8. Woe is me. I have unclean lips. But yet God forgive us for either you know saying a uh, cuss word or profanity. God will forgive us for using uh, for, for using um, you know uh, how to say a uh, uh, inappropriate slang terms? You know, you know God will forgive us, then we should not use these words. You know, and and I feel guilty of this as well. But it's all about being willing to be used by the Lord. God is asking, who can I send? To tell my people. And Isaiah's response is. Here I am. Send me. You know. That we should all. You know. Every kingdom man or a kingdom woman. Should respond. To the calling of God in their lives. Maybe you're called to be a prophet. In your job. Maybe God is using you to go to a third world country to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Maybe God is, is, is calling you to do prison ministry. Maybe God is calling you to be a nurse in a hospital to take care of them. Or maybe God is calling you to be a, uh, you know, to, to be a zookeeper or a, uh, or a banker. And we all should be responding, here I am, use me, or here I am, send me. Because those Christians right now, they're not doing jack. About the calling of their lives. They're more. Becoming more fleshly. Becoming more. You know. Not really usable for the Lord. They just go to church and do whatever they want. Monday through Saturday. But sometimes I got to pause. Sometimes I got to be in my prayer closet. And say Lord. You know, what is my calling? 
where should I be right now? You know? And sometimes God may, you know, God wants you to move to uh, Dallas, Texas. You know, to, to, to get a, to get a, I don't know, to, to go to school there or to, to get a job at some place. But it's all about trusting in the Lord. It's about denying your flesh and start walking in the spirit. See, the more you deny, the more you fast and pray and deny your flesh, the more that the spirit man will grow in you. And the more the spirit man grows, you have the utterance to be obedient to the Most High God. See, see, Christians don't like to hear that to hear that preach. They don't want to do they, they don't want to take care of the orphans and the widows. But they just want to go to church and just listen to to, to a preacher or a pastor or go through their own lives instead of having the urge to Preach the good news to somebody who who are in, uh, who's in need. Oh, go minister to that suicidal man by to jump in the bridge, by, by to jump off the bridge. And God is calling you to talk with that man who is homeless, who has nothing. See, obedience is key. If you want to be a a man of God, obedience is a requirement from God. If you're not going to be obedient to Him, then you shouldn't you shouldn't call yourself a kingdom man or a kingdom woman if you're not going to do what God tells you to do. See, one one once I surrender my life to Jesus Christ. I gotta go I gotta go obey him and him alone. And and God you know God is teaching me a lesson here. Well when I when I break down certain certain chapters of scripture, I make sure that I'm reading it reading it in context. Because because a lot of preachers these days don't read the scripture in context. They just read one verse and make and make a sermon out of that. I don't I don't think that's wise, in my opinion. I think that we should read the whole scripture. You know, to do the full counsel of God, as God, you know, uh, even in Second Timothy, talks about study to show yourself a proof unto God, a workman, not, you know, afraid to divide, the, you know, the word of truth. He got to, he got to. I know it's gonna be a short teaching here, but uh, and I close with this: your plans, your agendas, your narratives, God don't care. Your plans, your agenda, and your narratives, God don't care. Now let me repeat that one more time for the people in the back: your plans, your agendas, and your narratives. God don't care about. See, God has a plan, a better plan than than ours. God's calling is better than our own plans. So you got to understand that His ways are not our ways. His minds are not our minds. We serve a God who can destroy nations just like this. 
Remember Solomon and Gamora? Gotta destroy that city. God can destroy lives, folks. Yes, he, he, he's the giver of life, but he destroys it as well. And many Christians don't want to hear that. Remember uh, King Herod? An angel struck him with lightning and was eaten by worms alive. That's how God takes these things seriously. Call me a hypocrite. I, I advise you to do your own research, to do your own study on Isaiah chapter 6. Because we all have a calling in the kingdom of God. That's all, that's all there is to it. So, I do have one announcement, well, actually two announcements. Um, I'm going to be changing my YouTube name. Uh, it's going to be Miguel Fuentes, but I'm going to put uh, Kingdom Angler or Kingdom Fisherman, you know. And, you know, I, I just want to create, a, you know, a mixture of sermons and devotions and Bible studies and also sharing some fishing videos as well. Because I think fishing has become a new passion for me. Uh, maybe maybe do some tackle review. Maybe do some uh, maybe what my experience is, or how many fish that I caught this month, or or if I want to do a uh, fish biology study, we can do that. You know, or or, or a zoology study in general. Uh, I love you know. Today I just saw a turtle uh, at work at one of the properties basking in the sun, and, and that turtle would, you know, doesn't move for an inch, and uh, and I and I gave God praise because of that, Amen. And so I've been, you know, and also I'm trying to I'm trying to, I'm trying to buy a uh, one of those uh, chess. Mounts and I try to find the the uh, that has like a camera screw, you know, so I can screw in my camera and put like put on my chest to put like a uh, first person view type of video, you know, for me fishing. And you know, just you know, I think it is more easier that way than uh, having me set up like a little tripod there. And then uh, walk walk away, and and you're not you're not you're not gonna see me catching fish, or 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 if I'm out of view, basically. But I'm I'm trying to get that, and um, and yeah. So that's my announcement. So hopefully I can make this a kingdom fisherman type of type of channel. Um, doing sermons, we you know, studying the word of God together, and go fishing and all that good stuff. Amen. So may God bless you, may God keep you. I see you guys again next time. I see you on Friday doing the video podcast. So may God bless you, may God keep you. I see you guys again next time. Bye.